What is that third step, Echo, when it comes to building the rental property portfolio? So a steady income stream is very critical. If you employed, you look at your one to three months um, pay slip and your three months financial on your bank statement, that's what you show the bank. If you're a self-employed person like me, you're looking at a six or if you're a commission earner, you're looking at anything on average between six to 12 months. And if you're self-employed, it's your two years financial uh, financials that you need to show the bank. Uh, I always say, if you're self-employed, people must be very careful of tax write-off. I'm an advocate of tax uh, write-offs, but at some point it went negative um, it, against my favor. Why? Because the, 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 the banks looked at it and they said, you know what, In two, for example, I, and, and this, is an, uh, this is an actual um, example, um, first-hand experience. So in 2014, I was about to buy a property. Banks looked at my financials and they said, you know what, you, your income was very, very low, and therefore it impacted on my payment, on my affordability. Why did I do that? Of course, I had to get enough tax returns from the, from the taxman, enough tax write-off. But my advice now to self-employed people that want to go that way, that rely heavily on tax write-off, is to have a discussion with their lenders before they do that. It's very critical. I always say you must always have a buffer on your tax write off, at least 10% buffer on your tax write off in case the interest rate goes up, then you can always qualify for a higher payment. And that's one of the critical things, especially with self employed people, that I think they need to look into. Mm. And then what's the fourth step, Echo? The fourth step is get pre approved with lenders. So by that, I mean it helps to check your affordability before you start going out there, looking at property and making an offer. So speak with your lender first before you go on your house hunting uh, spree, if I should put it that way. And also never be afraid. We've spoken about this on this platform so many times, get multiple approvals. Why do you have to do that? There are two advantages if you go for multiple approvals. One is that you've got a backup option. And two is that you're going to get the best interest rates. Mm. And I think, you know, one of the things with pre-approval echo that I've certainly found is sometimes perhaps instead of going to the major banks to get pre-approved almost individually, working then with the bond originator comes in handy because you'll get a sense from the bond originator in terms of what we'll say almost all the financial institutions will likely extend to you. And by the time you find the property that you're, you know, eyeing and you're still working with that bond originator, you're able to have the conversation with uh, multiple financial institutions at the same time. So sometimes perhaps instead of getting pre-approved across different institutions, working with one bond originator to walk the journey with you uh, becomes so important because more often than not, they, they want you to get the property. Uh, so they really do sort of go the extra mile as much as possible. So once we've gotten pre-approved, uh, Echo, then what is the next step? Yes, yeah, so to move on to the next step, I'm glad that you've mentioned the bond originators because Big Grand also does that. We've got multiples of banks that we we uh, we on the panel to do that for our clients. So if people want to look at that, they can visit the Big Grand website uh, as www.bigrand.co.za and we'll assist them with that. The next step is do your research. You need to see everything on the markets in the, in the area that you want to buy in. It's very crucial. Find out which areas or, they, or find out which areas you feel that you feel that are undervalued. Look at that. Look at areas that are predominantly doing well or that are overpriced. And what I normally do is that when I look at areas that are overpriced, I move say five minutes away from where the 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 the, the action is taking place because eventually it's going to be followed up and people will be looking on the outskirts. So I look at five minutes away from areas that are doing well or that are overpriced, and then you get undervalued properties. Set, check what's, what's going on, what developments are going on there. Are the restaurant being built? Are the schools being built? Shopping centers and the rest. These are all indicators of areas that are about to boom. And if you can get in beforehand, that's great. But if you can't, don't despair. Drive 15 minutes around uh, or five minutes 
just outside and get a good property. I always say, also, when you during your research process, do your 100 house rule. And I've done a video on that. I think that's also one of the first discussions we had on this private property podcast. Uh, you people can check my YouTube where I talk about how to find your first investment property. It will take them through the systems, the calculations that we use, the 80-20 rules. Those are the things that you need to use when you do your research.